The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. I have an amazing guest, and I mean amazing. David Farrell is a man who can remember anything he looks at. He is in the Guinness Book of World Records. I am amazed by you, and you're Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. Your mom is one of my partners, and here you are in the Guinness Book. And by the way, what year was that? Uh, that, that was in the 2009 edition, but I still hold the record. I'm still the current world and record you, holder. And you, look look here, he memorized, how many cards did you memorize? Uh, well, I memorized look in order. Look at the saints, right here. 59 decks of playing cards all shuffled together. It took four volunteers to shuffle these How decks many of cards? cards? Uh, 3,068 cards in total. And the key is I was only allowed to see each card once, so there's no repetition. And people wow. from around the world have tried to break this record for years and haven't been able to. But I got to tell you, the, the really important thing is that I was not born with any special gift of memory. I had, a, I had a terrible memory. I had ADHD and dyslexia when I was in school. And it was actually, speaking of my mom, I mean, she was a big inspiration to me to try to overcome these challenges. And uh, that's why I became obsessed about memory techniques and it's kind of what let me... He's going to help us today <laughs> in memorizing the Bible. Yeah. And he's going to show you how to do it. But I am very impressed. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And David, I'm glad you're with me. I've never had a guest on the program who made the Guinness Book of World Records in memory. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm going to actually test you, okay, in just a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, yeah. So you got a deck of cards that you gave me, and I'm yeah. going to actually. So make sure you're watching all this. And. Uh, uh, you know, tell your children to come to the TV and let's watch this. Yeah, you're going to learn things today that not only can help you remember, you know, books of the Bible and things like that, but can also help kids in school, and that's really my passion. Wow. Now, you do hold uh, what you, you have special classes where you help people? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we hold seminars all across the world. Uh, I have uh, a very good selling memory improvement kit that can help students. Um, essentially, my message is that uh, whether or not you think you're born with a good memory, memory and learning and studying and even focus is a skill. It's something that can be trained and taught, and uh, that's why I've spent my whole life's work is coming up with the best, simplest way to teach people how to, okay, now, how to now, use you, their brain. You've, you've, okay, you've looked at all these cards already. Yeah, and they were shuffled, they uh, shuffled earlier. They, they were shuffled. So now yeah. let me ask you, I'm, I'm going to show you the first card. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me what's what card is sure. after that? Um, after that should be the nine of hearts. Then the you got it. Wait, wait. Here. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Keep and going. after that is what? Uh, the the two of diamonds, and then the ten of spades, then the uh, <laughs> queen of diamonds. Wow. The uh, king of diamonds. Wow. The, no, no. The, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Five I'm of hearts and the queen of clubs. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm I gonna keep going. I'm gonna go. I'm okay. gonna go to. Oh, you're like, gonna test me here. Okay. I'm gonna test you. Okay, so okay, I'm. So I, 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 here. I took a whole bunch out. Okay. And what's after this one? Now there's a. Okay, that should be right after that. Should be the three of hearts. Wait. Then let the, me let me let me see. Just see. Okay. Three of hearts. Yeah. Wow. And then the seven of hearts. And seven of clubs and two of spades. And I can keep going if you can. Keep going, keep Ace going. Ace of spades, the three of clubs. Wait, wait, wait. The three, here's the three. And, and the what's, what's after clubs, that? Six of clubs. And what's after that? The five of spades. Now, now listen, I've got them held, you know, backwards so you can't see, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, what, close my eyes. Well, okay. Wait, wait. Okay, so after, so, after the, the five is what? Uh, that should be the... I got it backwards, people. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, uh, I have okay, the, the eight of spades, then the... No, wait, wait. It is the eight. Awesome. How do you do that? Okay, what's after the eight? Uh, the jack of hearts. <laughs> what's <laughs> after that? You're, you're having fun. This okay, is great. Okay, let's go. Um, and, then, and then should be the ten of hearts. And you got it. then the seven so you, of you've, spades. So you've memorized, there's like how many, how many cards in all this? It took me about five minutes, but it's a 52 cards. It's a full deck. Okay, what's, what's next? Oh, uh, oh sorry, uh, seven of spades should be if I, yeah, I can lose, <laughs> lose track he of the... He is the... good. <laughs> okay, let's, let's now, go I want to, you the, to wait, know, wait, 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 no, no, wait, wait. Okay. Let's go to the first one. I'm, oh, I'm going oh, to really take some here. out here. All right. I'm going to show you this one here. 
All right, all right. Okay, now I've got them backwards, Saints. There it is. I've got them backwards. It's a lot of fun. Backwards. Okay, okay. so the next one. What's the next one? I'm the, looking at it. Okay, so it's the two of clubs. So then the next one should be the queen of spades. Right? <laughs> He's right <Awesome>. on. <laughs> Okay, show me how you. I gotta say how you. I've gotta say. All right. This. Now this is a demonstration of what. Yeah, I possible. know, but this is amazing that you would yeah. remember all of them, and they're falling on the floor here, by the way. Let's, let's, okay, now. Okay. How did you do that? You tell me. Well, you take all of them. They have put them together for yourself. Sure, sure, sure. Well, essentially, Honestly, this is. How did you do this that? is. You know, it's numbers and suits, so it's considered the most difficult thing to memorize. But what I do is I've developed a series of codes that can turn things that are difficult to memorize into something that's easier to memorize. So essentially, what's going on in my head is nothing more complex than remembering scenes from a movie you know just like wait, if wait, you, what do you mean by that well I mean think of your favorite movie I don't know what what, what would you say your favorite movie is I'm curious I like Ben Hur I like oh, Ben Hur around the world in 80 days with yep. David Nevin way back the the, the old one yeah. The, you know, classic, old classic. I, I like I Casablanca. It. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. So you uh, what? You... So, so if I were to give you a test on Ben-Hur, I'm sure you would do incredibly well, you know, in terms of memory recall. But if you actually asked yourself how long has it been since you saw that movie, I mean, probably it's been, it's been a it's while. like 10 years maybe or yeah, something, uh -huh. I'm thinking. Yeah? So, so how come you do so well on that test, yet you know, we forget what we had for breakfast? It's because our memories... I'll never forget what I had for breakfast. <laughs> well, breakfast, you're, you're an exceptional you person. <laughs> but most well, <laughs> now, you know, with me, I can remember numbers. Like, I, yeah. I'm really good with phone numbers. I, I can tell you everybody's phone number mm -hmm. almost. And that's, you know, I, I get yeah. a picture in my head of the number, like four or a nine mm -hmm. or a three. I'm terrible with names. Yeah, you're, you're famous with numbers. And this is something that, that a lot of people's memories are like. We call it being so one-sided. How will I remember people's names? What's your name again? Uh, I remember you, but who? What's your name again? And I mess them up real bad. Sure. Well, well, what you want to do is, is, is there's a certain part of the brain that has to be triggered, and it's triggered by what we like or what we enjoy. So if you just repeat someone's name over and over, like my my name my name, my last name's Pharaoh, right? Right. So so you could probably say, oh, I'm related. You know how I remembered your your name today? Oh, here we go. By thinking of Pharaoh. Like, of, like, like, like Pharaoh, pharaoh? In, yeah, the, in, an Egyptian pharaoh, mm -hmm. and I remembered it. Well, and that's the thing. If you try to think of, here's the, here's the mistake hey, people make. Hey, that's an easy one, you know, yeah. by the way. No, but here's the mistake people make is they look at you and go, oh, you know, you're, I, I'm a fan of me, a pharaoh, so I'll remember your name, and they won't. There's a lot of little myths out there, you know. I have a friend named Dave, so I'll remember your name, Dave, but there's nothing that connects it. What you probably did, you, you're a very smart man. You probably didn't even realize you did this, but you I imagined something. Sure what, I don't know what, what I did. All I know, because. <laughs> I but you imagine like maybe me dressed up as a pharaoh or something. Yes, sort of, I did yeah. this morning in the car. Right. I saw you. I saw a pharaoh, and I said I can remember that because I can see a so pharaoh. So people okay. who are incredibly good with names do things like that. Many years ago, there was a guy who used to go to the full gospel businessman meetings. Yeah, and he had the same gift that you have. Yeah, and he said that you remember with images. Yeah, like if you say fire, mm -hmm. sorry, if you see if if you say hot, you see fire. Mm -hmm. If you say cold, you see ice. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. You start to get into a pattern where it becomes almost automatic, where you meet people and you automatically think of an association, and it uh, it sticks. And people start treating you differently. People treat you with with uh, with uh, an awe because you're this walking encyclopedia. And that, that's that's one of the greatest uh, parts about. If you just <laughs> tuned in, this man made the Guinness Book of World Records in memory, and he memorized over 3,000 cards mm -hmm. back in what, 2000? Uh, it was, was in that? like 2000, uh, it was like 2007, and it was published in 2009. But the record still stands today. And I actually, my first record was in 1996, so I've been doing this for a little while. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> Today you're going to show us how to memorize the Bible, which is this is what right, we all right, want. Right. But so, how did you? How did this all begin with you? Well, I actually was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia when I was in school. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, uh, or they know somebody who's of in course, that situation. And uh, I was 14, and I was. I mean, I was depressed. I'll be honest. I was depressed, and I had a teacher that went up to me, and you know. Um, I will say a lot of my teachers were, were wonderful, but there was this one who essentially told me that I wouldn't amount to anything and said it to my face. Uh, and this wow. this was a turning point in my life. That's when the fight came out in you. Well, well it, not at first, actually. It took my mom, actually, where we were at a parent-teacher meeting, and she, he said the same thing to her. And she's, she's a lady, she's polite, and you know he turned away, and then she turned to me and said, don't you believe a, a darn word that guy says, <laughs> and I won't 
See, we didn't use the word darn, but but it was it was it was monumental I like your to me. Thank I, you. I know. <laughs> she, she, okay, go ahead. So so she did. I mean, in that moment, she gave me a great gift, which is the idea that I can fight back. Against of course, her. you have to find. And back. I when I became obsessed with how my brain works. You know, one of the simplest things that I can tell you right now, a simple way that I, if every student knew this, there would be a, a lot less blanking out on tests, a lot more, a higher test scores. A, a simple little thing you can do. It sounds almost. It sounds almost, you know, too silly, but it works every single time. Which is uh, what? It is, it is to simply look up. One of the things I noticed, I was blanking out on a lot of my tests. This is going back into high school. I'm, I'm quite a ways out of high school now. Um, but uh, I, was, I was blanking out, and essentially what was going on is I would get stressed out. I would look down at my page. I'd forget the information, and then I'd eventually give up. I'd hand it to the teacher, and I'd walk out. When I walk a little farther down the hall, what happens? You start thinking about the test. And then the information pops into your head. It does. Right. The reason why that happens, most of the reason, partially is stress, but the other part is where you point your eyeballs. Whoa. It, is, it absolutely was amazing. Simply forcing myself, when I get stressed, to stop and look up and take just one or two breaths to relax. The information popped into my head. And then, of course, the science is that... I have never heard that. Well, the science is that behind your eyeballs is a bundle of nerves called the optic nerves. And it's a very, very large bundle of nerves. And it mm. tends to direct energy in the brain. But you know, without getting into that, everybody has been asked for directions. And your natural tendency is to look up. You go, OK, let's see. It's down the street. Uh, okay, you're gonna you're gonna you know go across right. this and we, you go right. We all it's, do that. It's not written on the sky, right. but it's our natural tendency. But in but when you get stressed out, your natural tendency is to look down. That's why depressed people and stressed out people they look down. So I always say, hey, keep looking up. And that is really powerful. If you actually do it, when I've taught this to students, it has changed lives. And it's just it's one tip. It takes five seconds. So, I mean, I, that's why I'm here to spread the word that with just a little bit of instruction on how your brain actually works, you can achieve just amazing miracles. Where, where do you have your classes? Do you have anything online? Yeah, we have a lot of programs online. I've got, I've got, I actually have an online university uh, uh, that gives, uh, actually gives credits in memory training for, for teachers as well. Well, and uh, we have it yeah. on, on the screen so you can look them yep. up. I want to talk about the Bible. I mean, all right. you've got a system here on how to remember all the books, well, most of the books of the New Testament. Yeah. So for Matthew, well, let, let's let's start off at the beginning. When, okay. when when you want to teach this to kids, they're like, "Oh, I'm going to get you to memorize the Bible," and they're like, "I don't want to do that." You ever try to teach this to kids? Why is right? it that children can remember the books of the Bible with a song, and yet they can't remember it without a song? <laughs> is there something uh, about a, a song? A melody help. or a song can help. Essentially, what you're doing is you're adding more sensory information. Like but, my my children can mm -hmm. sing the the books of the Bible. Yeah. But if if I should ask them. Right. Repeat that without a song, they, yeah, they struggle. It's the same as like trying to say your alphabet without a song. That is the limitation of rote memory. They also probably can't easily go backwards either. I'm going to show you something. It'll just uh, in just a couple. I of mean, my minutes. kids are grown and gone. Yeah, and they still remember. Like you know, Joshua is 22, and he can still sing mm -hmm. and remember the books of the Bible. But but if if I say, okay, give them to me. Yeah, he'll he'll stare he at to, me. Da, like, da, 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 yeah, yeah. Th then he's got to go back to the song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, here is an improvement on that, all right? Um, and this is just a little game you can play with kids. Uh, essentially, uh, I do this all the time in all of my seminars, uh, even when it's not books of the Bible. Essentially, if a doctor were to test your memory, they would give you a list of random objects. So I say to, the, say to them, let's play a game. Get out a piece of paper and start drawing things. And we start off with some of these items on the list. And then they, they draw it and essentially create a little story. Wow. And then you say, OK, I'm going to take this away. Do you remember the items? Take away what they were drawing. Do you remember the items in that story? Of course I remember the items. It's a funny story. And they remember every single thing forwards and backwards. And then I go, well, you know what? Each item corresponded to a book of the Bible, book of the New Testament. And then I flip it over and show them how it works. So uh, I, can, I can do that for your listeners. Yeah, your do, it, yeah. Do, it, do it right okay. now. I love so, that. Uh, essentially. Look, look at the camera and talk to them. All right. Right there. All right. So um, let's start off with the first, you know, uh, obviously people who know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and perhaps some of the viewers might not know everything off the top of their head. Well, here's a great trick for you. You start off, just get them to draw a picture of a welcome mat. That's to represent Matthew. So a welcome mat. And then uh, tell them that uh, somebody's graffitied all over it with markers. So you got this mat that's just been destroyed with a bunch of Sharpie markers. And then you have to wash it, so you're washing it with warm water, lukewarm water for 
Oh, so, so Luke. There's, there's Matthew, there's, there's Mark, Mark okay, and there's Luke. There's Luke. Okay. So just by picturing just that in the top of your head, all, hey, Matt, all of a sudden, that's, that, that has yeah. been messed up and washed. And washed. Wow. So who's Literal. washing it? Uh, I always, I always say Johnny Depp is washing it because you want John in there. I used to use John Wayne, but then the kids didn't know who John Wayne was after a while. <laughs> okay. So we say Johnny Depp is washing the water, and he's doing this on stage for some reason because he's an actor. So, so that's, there, there you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, X. Okay. And X, absolutely. Then the next, the next show on stage is is a Roman play. So a bunch of Romans push everybody off the stage. But so that's Romans. And then after that, uh, the play is terrible for some reason. So everybody throws apple cores at them. Now, this is where you have to get kind of creative because a lot of kids don't know the word Corinthians. So we just took the word core out of it and thought an apple core. And that's just a bit of a hint to get them to remember the whole thing. Yep. So it's a fun little game. So they throw apple cores. And then after that is Galatians. So I imagine a bunch of seagulls for Galatians, gulls, uh, flying How'd around. How do you tie the gulls it? with the mat, with the Romans, with the well, stage? Well, you know, what you'd imagine is like the apple cores are attracting the gulls. So one thing attracts okay, the next I, I, thing, and that attracts I mean, the I next I can remember thing. this. So there's a mat, yeah. and somebody messes it up, and somebody washes it. Yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, because Luke with Luke, uh, warm Luke water. Warm water. Yeah. and then John comes up. So there's John, and he's acting. So there's acts, and there's a bunch of Roman Romans soldiers come yeah. up. And well, the other thing is, a lot of people, a lot of people know do. the books of the Bible, but they won't, might not know the exact order. This gives it, this gives them an image they can always go back to. With a with a miss. play in their head, yeah. going in their head, yeah. yeah. So I mean, just to finish it off, after the seagulls, you got to pay an exterminator to get rid of the seagulls, so they have to pay them a big fee, and that's to remind you of Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians yeah. And and we can keep on going, but that's that's the that essentially because of First and Second Corinthians that gets. You the have first, all this in the your book, 10. right? Yes, absolutely. We have all in the book, and also in the in the in the program, we show you uh, step by step. Step, Have you seen techniques. people? Okay, now tell me what you've seen with people that you helped who had no memory or no good oh, memory. Oh my God! Can okay, I tell me about I it? I had I had an 86-year-old woman in Chicago. She grabbed my rather forcefully for an 86-year-old woman. She's very strong. She grabbed my jacket and she said, "What did you it's do to my the brain?" It's olive oil. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's the olive oil. The there olive you go. Oil, brother, Just yeah. what did you do to my brain? She was in a forgetful state of mind. She was getting very worried about her memory when she turned 80, and she took my program. And six years later, she says that she's sharper than her kids. She's actually wow. tutoring her grandkids. Have you seen people uh, succeed in business who could not succeed? In I business? have lists of emails from people who are doctors and lawyers now, and they say that they wouldn't have been able to pass the bar, they wouldn't be able to pass these exams. I don't know how I feel about the lawyers, but I think the doctors make up for it. <laughs> That's the joke. No, I, I love the lawyers too. Don't sue me. Um, but but uh, I, have, I have lists of people, and especially I also do the college circuit, and I speak at, at churches as well, and we do fundraisers. You've try, done try also the. the you've done some shows. You've been on program, different yeah, programs. Yeah, I've been like, on like uh, like Dr. Oz, the Today Show, You've been CNN. on Oz and Today, yeah, wow. Yeah, and Today Show, CNN, uh, uh, Fox. What do, you, uh, what do you do on, what, what do you show them? Well, same thing. Yeah, you're doing we do a now? demonstration like this. But essentially, my my passion really is to show people that this is more than just a parlor trick. This is something that people can use. It, it, if we let it, it could revolutionize education. It could bring it could bring us a whole new level of of, of really brilliant kids that can be a, be part of the next the next wave of technology. How did you overcome everything. your problem when you were? A, a little boy. Uh, well, part of it was techniques, and part of it was uh, tell. Just in case somebody missed uh, what yeah. you said earlier. Yeah, I, I, I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia going into school. How did you uh, overcome that? Well. You know, the biggest part was the self-esteem. Uh, to be honest, uh, you can kind of do a workaround when it comes to actual study skills. But the biggest problem I noticed with other students my same age, when they got ADD, they gave up. They're like, oh, what? I don't have to. I don't have to try anymore because I have these learning disabilities. And, and, for me, it made me try harder. So um, there is a technique actually in in the in the CD set that I'm really passionate about. That is a technique to turn on focus. It's a it's a way we discovered. Um, have you ever have you ever really felt you're in the zone? You're able to read really fast and just yeah, learn quickly. Absolutely, and yeah. yeah. And there's other times that you want to be there, but you have kind of a writer's block. Probably, you know, you, you're you're a great writer, so. Uh, this technique was kind of derived from these writers who were getting writer's block. And there's a way to structure your time so that you're actually able to focus more. And it, it essentially it cured me of my ADD, or, or I should say it made it, it, made, it allowed me to use it as an advantage. Now I can focus better than most people because I'm able to activate uh, focus in the brain. You think smartphones are 
hurting us? So now we rely so much on yeah, our iPhone, smartphones rather than memory and all yeah. this stuff. Well, smartphones are, are very, I actually have, have, have worked really hard in the, in the science of this lately, and there have been some studies. Essentially, what we've done is we rely on our smartphones to do a lot of memory work for us. It started when phones had the address books, and we stopped remembering the phone numbers. You are very good at, you kept on remembering the yeah, numbers, so that's probably kept you very sharp. I like my brain to stay alive. Well. That is, that is essentially my big message, that if you exercise your brain, if you use it on a regular basis, all the studies are very clear. You cut your risk for memory loss as you get older, you get brain sharper, but more than that, you can participate in life. You can learn new things, you can, you can enjoy life more because you're, you're able to come up to speed. Um, so, uh, so what we've done with people, uh, can, I, can I tell you one, one quick Anything story? Anything you want, of course yeah, you can there, tell me. There's this one, it's one little girl that made a big, because you asked about my, my, my customers and, and what I've done. And we did, we, I went to this school and I volunteered my time to go to this school uh, to teach uh, um, times tables. And we finished the times table lessons. And it's fun, it's actually a lot like this where they draw mm -hmm. pictures and at the end the pictures turn into the times tables essentially. And it's, it's a lot of fun, the kids love it. But I had, I had a, a little girl come up to me and she pulled on the back of my jacket and I turned around and there were these giant eyeballs staring back up at me. <laughs> and it just, I mean, it's the type of it stare. It touched too deep, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, like you're, when I picked my heart up off sure, the floor. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she looked up at me with these giant like baby seal eyes you know and and she just went to me and she said i'm not stupid and I, I didn't know what to say and i found out that she had been diagnosed same as me and she essentially you know didn't didn't hear add didn't hear dyslexic she heard i'm stupid wow. you know so the techniques that I taught her gave her some confidence, and I followed I followed her for, for actually for years later, and uh, like with with her mom and everything, we kept in touch via email. And uh, the the biggest thing that they said was that the confidence builder once once you teach a child that memory and learning is a skill that they can uh, they they can do something with, it gives them power. It, it it instead of just saying, oh, you're born this way and you can't do anything about it. It's a skill that you can learn. And it made a huge difference in her life. Now she actually did really well in, in areas that didn't have much to do with memory, but her confidence pulled her through. Listen, David has made the Guinness Book of World Records and when it comes to memory, he's done extremely well. He's been on the Today Show, Dr. Oz, CNN, and so on. And he's here to help us. And he is a born-again Pentecostal Christian <laughs> who wants to help your children, wants to help you. You know, I love to get his stuff just mm -hmm. to see what he has to say about knowing the Bible better, memorizing the well, Bible. I mean, I, and and a lot, a lot of uh, people came up to me, and they were seniors, and they were working with their grandchildren as well. And they were kind of, you know, taking into the next generation and able to sit down with them and sharpening their memory well, as they exactly. help their grandkids I mean, with studying. You, you can help so many mm -hmm. precious people. I mean, I'm going to use your stuff. I want to know more. Uh, but but yeah. you precious saints, maybe, maybe that have children or loved ones that can use this technique mm -hmm. in really bringing health to their minds yeah. and, uh, and, and being able to remember things. I mean, that's amazing what God has given you. What a great Thank gift. Thank you so much. I appreciate now, that. Now, okay, first, what's in the book? And then I want to know what's in this. Uh, you, you got four DVDs or CDs here, there, right? There, these are four CDs. And this, this takes you through from beginning to end, all, all the basic to the advanced techniques. You learn how to memorize speeches, text, definitions, formulas, wow. um, even for high-end exam and test taking. Now, you want to know the biggest problem we have with students uh, who are taking my program? The biggest problem we have, we get more emails on this than anything else. They say, how do I convince my teacher I am not cheating? <laughs> because wow. they essentially do perfect on every test that has to do with memory. So this is now, the program. I'm holding the four CDs. Yeah. These and, are and CDs, learn, right? Not yeah, DVDs. CDs, you listen to it in your car. We have one bonus DVD on uh, study skills uh, for, uh, for students. It, it talks about my Pharaoh method for studying. We're throwing that in. Millionaire uh, you know, memory, you call it. Unleash right. the power of your mind. Wow. Because, because it's all about prosperity. I had the biggest, the biggest feedback I had from my students, uh, my customers, was that they were using it at work, and they were just trying to get sharper. Just trying to get a sharper Man, brain, and they were promoted. They were uh, they were given more respect. They were uh, you know they were the person who always had the answer when everyone else was looking. Listen, you can looking you can up. have this amazing gift to your life, 
uh, for a gift to the ministry of $100. You can get this today. I mean, think about what this can do to your life and future. And you have a bonus DVD with it. What's on the DVD? The DVD is mainly for, for students. So this is like your kids and grandkids uh, because the young kids, they don't like to listen to audio instruction as much. Okay. So we've made these lessons really short and really good for kids. And for those who will call today, I'm going to also send you free this book uh, about how to remember the Bible. Now, if you want the book by itself, it's for a gift of $25. And David, what's in the book? What will they get if well, they just get this book essentially, by itself? Essentially, people want to memorize the Bible. They want, to they want to be able to quote it. And being able to quote it gives you a lot of power in a lot of situations, everything from arguments to just, you know, when, when you want to talk about Scripture. So uh, this gives you the power to take your favorite verses and break it down and memorize it. It's not just the verses that we have in here, but I, I show you the secret behind it so well, you can do it yourself. Well, listen, if, if I was you, I'd get the whole thing. That is your full course in here, and, th and that's our that's our full program. I mean, we, this this usually uh, retails for one hundred and fifty dollars on its own. Wow, we sold it all around the world, and and, then, and in so addition you to that, you actually sell this by itself for one hundred and fifty. We we do sell that worldwide for one hundred and fifty. Okay, on its own. Uh, you can have it for only a hundred. In addition, with that, you will have the bonus DVD and the little book. Remember the Bible. These are, I mean, that's a great great. I just, offer. I'm I, telling you, take hold of it and call the number on the screen. Think what this can do to your children, your family, yourself. Wow, David, this has been awesome and amazing. And please say hi to your mom for me and tell her I'd like to meet her very soon. <laughs> Make sure to call. Keep so calling for this that. amazing. I'm going to have you back. Uh, with an audience and have you, I want to see this in action. Yeah, we could we could teach a whole audience how to say hello in seven different languages and, and have some have some fun. Let's do that. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to have David back. And, and I got to Go say, I, I love my, my customers, the Christian customers. They are some of the most studious people. I think there's something about improving yourself that's a very Christian thing is, is, is to, you know, we always can improve. We can always work on things. And, you know, everybody just wants to get the tools. To Let's do it today, so Saints. I get some of the best feedback. Wow. Bless you, and I'll see you again. I'm going to have David back. So call, call, call. Keep calling and get these amazing products that will truly change your tomorrow. Bye-bye. Join Pastor Benny Hinn in Israel, October 29th through November 7th. You'll walk where Jesus walked, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Call today for information or go online to download a brochure. Experience Israel with Pastor Benny Hinn. You'll never be the same. I'm going to Israel this October and I want to take your prayer request with me because I believe with all of my heart that the power and presence of the Holy Spirit will be so mighty when I'm there that God will meet your needs as we pray. Israel is a very special place because it's God's land. And when you pray there, something always happens. It's an, the, the, the atmosphere is packed with the power of God. It's the land of miracles. And I want to believe God for your miracle. So send me your prayer requests and pictures of your loved ones. Hundreds of people are coming with me. We're going to all pray for you. Send your prayer request today to Post Office Box 16, 2000 Irving, Texas. And believe God that every need in your life and your home will be met in Jesus' name.